Hello! Today, we're going to be talking about the law of science. Before, in trigonometry, we usually deal with triangles that are right triangles only. However, as mathematicians, we like to generalize our notions to all kinds of cases. And last time I checked, not all triangles are right triangles. Okay? So we want to establish a relation, a relationship between the leg lengths and the angles of general triangles. Not necessarily only right triangles where we have sine and cosine and tangent and all these other trigonometric functions. But what is the relationship between these values, these leg lengths and these angles in a non-right triangle, a general, right, uh, general triangle? And so that is what the law of sines is. And, and I will explicitly give you what it is. It's A over sine of capital A is equivalent to B over sine of capital B, which is equal to C over sine of capital C. All right? This is the law of sines right here. However, this video is not about necessarily how to use the law of sines, but where it comes from. So we will be deriving the law of sines. Let us do so. To begin, we're given this situation right here. Notice that we have a general triangle. It's not a right triangle. There's no 90 degree angles in it. But we can actually create right triangles from this non-right triangle. And we do it like this. What we say is we, we go to this angle A and we say, okay, what if I were to create a line that as it goes out, it would create it would perfectly be perpendicular to that leg A, little A. It would, what if I were to create a line like that that would create a line that's perfectly perpendicular to that leg little A, okay? And what if I called this some little H for height? right notice when we do so we have created two right triangles one right here with the right angle being there and one right here with the right angle being there so notice out of this one triangle we've created two right triangles so why is that important because now we can utilize the tricks and the tools that we have established in trigonometry because sine and cosine they only work for right triangles and so now we can actually with this technique, apply sine and cosine's definition. So let's examine what the sine of this angle C is. Sine of big C is opposite over hypotenuse, so the opposite is little h, and the hypotenuse is the opposite of the 90 degree angle, which is little b. Notice that we can solve for little h by multiplying both sides by little b. All right, when we do that, we get b sine of capital C is equal to little h, all right? This is something that we get, and I'm going to box it, all right? Now, on the other side of the triangle here, for this angle B, let us evaluate the sine of that value. Why, why am I just taking sines? Why am I not taking cosines? Well, it's because this is the law of sines. It is a, only utilizing the trigonometric function sine. So when I take the sine of B, that is opposite, little h, over hypotenuse, the angle opposite to the 90 degrees, so little c. And so when I multiply both sides by little c, I solve for h, little h, and I get uh, little c sine of capital B is equal to little h. Okay? Notice these two entities in these boxes are equivalent to the same thing, h. So since this is equal to h, and this is equal to h, they're equal to each other. So that means the first box and the second box, the left-hand side can be set equal to each other. All right. Once we do this, we can now divide both sides by a sign of capital C. So over here they cancel, leaving just a B is equal to little c sine of capital B over sine of capital C. And notice now I can divide both sides by sine of B. 
which would give us, if we go in this direction, now we get little b over sine of capital B is equal to little c all over sine of capital C. All right? Notice that what is here in this box is now this piece of the law of sines. So we've only established this piece of the law of sines. We have not established this far left piece. And so in order to establish this far left, far left piece, we have to alter our triangle in a slightly different way and use a slightly different argument. And I'll show you that. So I will keep these, what's in the box here on the bottom left there because that is imperative to know that we've shown that so far. And now I'm going to alter this triangle. I'm going to restore it to its original way prior to creating this line and putting these right angle signs over here. All right. So this is what a triangle used to look like before I modified it, right? Okay. So now we want to do something similar. We want to actually create a right triangle out of this non-right triangle. And one way to do that and to get this little a divided by sine of capital A involved is to actually say, what if I were to create a line like this and extend this line over here? You see that? So in doing so, we would create a new H. I'll call this capital H because it is not the same as this little H. It's actually possibly bigger or smaller. Uh, that is unknown because this is a general triangle, but it's clearly a different H. It's not necessarily the same as little H. So I'll call it biggest to keep that distinction in the back of your heads. Notice that this now creates a right angle. And now we have created a right triangle that is kind of now attached to our original triangle. But why are we doing this? Well, it's actually in order to establish this A or sine of capital A portion. And now in order to do so, I have to kind of call this new angle something. I'll call this new angle theta. And remember that this little angle over here, this was B, just B. All right, so I'm going to put that there. I'm just uh, moving where these symbols are. They're still, they haven't changed. They're just, I'm placing them inside the triangle so that I can create new symbols there. there I'm not altering the triangle or the letters at all. I'm just putting them in the triangle and set it up so, so that it's easier for you to see. So over here now, theta, notice that I can say that theta in terms of angles is the same thing as 180 degrees minus the angle A. Does that make sense? Because if this is a straight line, it's 180 degrees, right? And so if this amount is A and this amount is theta, then how did I get to this piece? Well, I got to that. I got to this relation right here, theta is equal to 180 degrees minus A, because I realized that theta plus A is equal to 180 degrees. And then you can just say, oh, if I subtract both sides by A, then I get theta is equal to 180 minus A. So this is how we get this relationship, because this angle plus this angle creates a straight line, and that's 180 degrees. So that's how we establish that. All right. Next, we have to establish something called a supplemental identity. And I'll write it out. This is the supplemental identity is that the sine of 180 degrees minus a is the same thing as the sine of A. All right. Why is this true? Well, let A equal pi over 4, for instance. So this, is, this claim would say that sine of pi over 4 
which as you know is root 2 over 2, is the same thing as sine of 180 degrees, which actually in radians is just pi, pi minus pi over 4. So that 180 degrees minus a is the same thing as pi minus a, and a is equal to pi over 4, so it's the same thing as pi minus pi over 4. Notice that this gives me sine of 3 pi over 4. Okay, so where is sine of 3 pi over 4? Well, notice that if you look at the unit circle here, if we were at pi and we scooted back 45 degrees, it's over here. And so sine assumes a positive root 2 over 2 value at that location. And so these are indeed equivalent. So this right here, heuristically anyways, and through an example, can be shown to be true. I just plugged in an example here for you. I did not give you a full proof for it. But that is just to show you that it is indeed true. So we're going to use this because notice that I could replace this with theta. So this means that the sine of theta is equal to the sine of A. This is very important, okay? Because the sine of A, we don't know because it's an obtuse angle, it's not a right angle, and we know how to we only know how to define the sine, cosine, tangent of right triangles. So this is not a right triangle. But I know sine of theta. Sine of theta is opposite over adjacent. And so that's capital H. Uh, it's opposite over hypotenuse. So it's a uh, capital H divided by the hypotenuse C. All right. So that's the same thing as sine of A, capital A. So this implies that capital H is equal to little c sine of capital A. All right. Remember this. Remember this right here. All right, I'll keep it boxed and I'll clear it some real estate over here. Now that we've established the supplemental angles, the supplemental trigonometric identity. Now, this one is gonna require you to kinda of see the problem in the big picture, literally, quite literally. Notice that this is a triangle and this is a triangle but actually, the whole thing is also a triangle, right here. This whole thing, if I shade it, this whole thing is a big triangle, where this is a right angle. So it's the large, when you add this triangle to that triangle, they make a large right triangle. And notice that now I can evaluate the sine of capital C. That's opposite over hypotenuse, so that's capital H over the hypotenuse, which is A little a. So that means I can solve for capital H. That's little a sine of little c. That's equal to capital H. Notice that if this is equal to capital H and this is equal to capital H, we can set them equal to each other. So that implies I have a sine of, of capital C is equal to little c sine of capital A. And when I divide both sides by sine of c, and then afterwards, divide both sides by sine of A. I establish A over sine of capital A is equal to little c all over sine of capital C. Notice that this establishes the law of sines because prior to that, we had the B stuff is equal to the C stuff. And now we have that the A stuff is equal to the C stuff. And if the C stuff is also equal to the B stuff, then the A stuff is also equal to the B stuff. So that means we have proven the law of science because we've established both the equations that were necessary to assert the following statement.